So how do you feel? What's your what are your first thoughts? I think I think it's a fair in the it's within the range of a fair sentence. As a, as the victim, you always would like to see a longer sentence. Of course, that's always your perspective. But it certainly was a fair and just decision. The one the one part of the Canadian system that needs to be worked on is it is the ability to achieve some sort of restitution. Because I've tried to achieve restitution through civil courts, which he's ignored, and now the criminal restitution order is equivalent to a civil judgment again. So the Canadian system does not offer any opportunity for practical restitution. Does she apologize today in her statement? Do you believe her? Uh, I, I, do, I do not. She, she has perpetrated this over a long period of time. And despite what her defense lawyer said today, she, she had opportunity to express remorse through her actions as opposed, opposed to actually speaking to me. But she's taken every step to make sure that this process in every court has been as lengthy as it could possibly be. And that to me speaks to a complete and utter lack of remorse. She wanted to see whether my resolve for justice was as much as her resolve to make me go through. What, what, can, what can you tell to the man who called escorts? You have tip today to give to them? Uh, just realize that it's it's a not not everyone in in that that field is that way first of all so i don't want anyone to have the idea that escorts or people in that line of work are in any way at all similar to my situation but as always you hope you hope that my case is a alert to anybody out there who's seeing their emotions played with for financial gain. What did you uh, think of her? She she cried in court. Uh, I I can't really comment, but I I would not rely on it. What did you think of her tears today? She cried in court uh, or appeared to. Uh, I'm glad that this is over. I it takes a lot of intestinal fortitude to sit in all three courts and then uh, still through every step because of her deception it hasn't stopped throughout the whole process right so you're always sitting back and wondering what's what's the next curveball she's going to try and throw at you right and as far as tears that's She cries for herself, for no one else. She apologized to you today too. Is that the first time she's done that? Uh, y yes. Well, she said in, she did apologize to me in um, the mediation. But what's important there is that uh, mediation is not a public record. So what she said there was directly in a form that could not be used in any We should perform outside that. So it had, it was a whole statement purely to start the process. Did you take any emotional cost there? Well, uh, your trust in other people is completely destroyed. So what what is a new relationship after this? Indic indicated very clearly and uh, made it obvious that my motives were all pure in terms of uh, wanting a long-term long relationship with, with a wife and family. And that's something I've always uh, believed from the very beginning. So having the judge read that into the, uh, the record was important to me. Because that was the, her, the long-term relationship was always the motive behind all this. What did you think as you sat there? Your reaction to the four years? Um, no surprise. Why? That's within the range. That's what I figured in regard to the circumstances. The offense, the offender, the victim. 
Was, was she prepared right. for that kind of sentence? Which, um, yeah. Okay. You said that uh, he didn't believe the remorse that she expressed. Do you think she was prepared? Well, I think she was. I think she expressed it to the best of her capabilities, which are very limited, given her personality disorder, which, whether or not it's been fully accepted by the court, that's the best she can do. Are you going to appeal um, she got 30 days to decide that. Uh, it was mentioned that uh, since she has been incarcerated, it has not been easy for her. So, moving forward now, uh, you haven't had a chance to talk to her and realize that, but how do you think she's doing? You know, anybody who gets incarcerated for the first time, it's very tough. Uh, with her issues, it's even more difficult. She still has other outstanding perjury charges that have to be resolved dealt with, so it's going to be a tough couple of months, maybe a tough couple of years. Are you confident she'll get the assessment and the, the mental health help that she needs? Uh, I think it'll be available to her, so whether or not she takes advantage of it. What about the rest of the Yeah. Explain it to us. That's going to take a while that nobody may know. Well, what exactly did he say? Pardon? Did she she'll prepare back, though? That's... That'll, that'll, that process will begin many years after she's released. What, what exactly did the judge say in terms of that? I didn't quite understand it. In terms of what part? Restitution. Well, there's basically uh, over $800,000 in restitution was ordered free, in a freestanding order in, in addition to the, uh, to the civil judgment. But he declined to make a fine in lieu of forfeiture, which would have meant that she would face more jail if she's not able to pay that, pay that fine as a result of being convicted of uh, money laundering. But, but when she gets out of jail, would she still have to pay that back? The $800,000 800, is part of a, a restitution order as well as civil judgment. But I'm saying, like, you know, if she goes out and gets a job after she's done she the She's going to be expected that her, her wages could be garnished. For the rest of her life? Yep.